Hello everyone, and welcome to the third video of the Cheriton Archives. For today's subject, we are going to be talking extensively about the infamous and controversial black market. Before we start, I have one announcement that I have to make to all viewers that have not yet read the manga. From this video forth, I intend to talk about topics more involved with the actual world and story represented in Beastars and Beast Complex. This means that from now on, spoilers will likely be discussed in every following video. Whilst I would like to keep things as accessible as possible for all Beastars fans, it is simply almost impossible to talk about the world and lore without delving into spoiler territory. This video will already contain spoilers for Beastars, including the climax. If you don't want potential scenes of Season 3 spoiled, then this is your final warning. With that out of the way, let us begin. The Black Market. For some, it is heaven on earth. A place where forbidden desires and carnivorous instincts can be acted upon without a hint of judgement or consequences. For others, however, it is the polar opposite. A hellish place of death, imprisonment and a pure violation of beast decency. But what truly is the Black Market? Is the Black Market and the perspective that most beasts have of it even correct? I think the best place to start is to ask why we even have a black market. Why this place even exists. The relationship between carnivores and herbivores is strenuous to say the least. While we pretend that all is well in society, we all know that this is definitely not the case. Herbivores are severely distrusting of carnivores, and we constantly hear about the devourings in the news, of carnivores attacking herbivores and devouring them because of the drive and the hunger for meat. For neither party, this is a favorable outcome. Carnivores get an even worse reputation and are even more distrusted and disliked by herbivores. While herbivores have to live in constant fear to be devoured by a random hungry carnivore. This is why the black market exists. The black market sources its meat from hospitals, from morgues and other such places. This meat belongs to beasts who have already passed away from other causes. Because of this, Carnivores can act in on their carnivorous instincts without having to hurt anyone. Their drive to eat meat, their hunger, their instincts are sated, and no herbivores are harmed. But it is not just the primal instincts of wanting to eat meat that is satisfied. Other instincts are as well. The biggest one, of course, being sexual desires. Brothels and strip clubs are present within the black market. There is even a herbivore dancer at one of the clubs, who is there completely at her own free will saying that she enjoys the thrill of performing for carnivores. In short, the black market is there for the safety of herbivores and the pleasure of carnivores. Carnivores can act in on their instincts, live as they want to live, and not have to fear that they hurt innocents as a result. All seems well. This is, however, until the Turf War. The Turf War is seen late in the manga. It is a moment where territory gets split between the major gangs of the black market, namely the Shishigumi, the Inarigumi, the Dokugumi, and the Madaragumi. Every new challenger that enters must partake in a quiz. Losing means death by skewering. The quiz between Lagoshi and Melon took place 20 years after the last one, which was played when the Inarigumi joined as the newest major gang. The turf war is never truly seen in its purest form. Only the Shishigumi and the Madaragumi are seen actually participating. The other gangs are fought by Lagoshi. This is, of course, a very unorthodox turf war, and only the battle between the Madaragumi and the Shishigumi can be used to tell how these wars usually play out. Unfortunately, because of the way the story went, it is hard to tell how exactly these turf wars affect the politics of the black market. However, while this is the most violent the black market seems to get on the surface, it does have its even darker underbelly. Things to make the turf war look tame in comparison. Things that carnivores either don't know about, pretend don't exist, or worse, actively participate in. The gangs are quite powerful in the black market. In fact, you might even say they rule it. They run the protection of the shops, they administer justice in the streets, and they take care of anyone who dares to get in their way or cause trouble. Murders, devourings, and the endorsement of other illegal practices are just some of the acts that these gangs commit. Smaller gangs are shown no mercy and are violently dispatched of. The Shishigumi is even shown to have hung corpses of their adversaries above the gate of their HQ. 
Ibuki tells us that it is normal to cut the head off a different gang's boss and hang it on the wall of your own HQ as a trophy. In short, deadly violence is quite the norm in the black market. This violence does not just apply to gangs. Carnivores that eat meat but are then incapable of getting more, or ones that rely too much on it, can become crazed. They will want to devour more and more meat. Eventually, the dead meat of the black market won't do it for them anymore, and they devour a living beast instead. Other carnivores, those who have never even set foot in the black market but gave in to their cravings and devoured another living beast, even if only once, will also be affected. These carnivores will scavenge and hunt for any kind of meat that they can find, whether it be discarded trash, living herbivores, or even living carnivores. Most can't live with the guilt, with the pain. They resort to self-harm, or even devouring parts of their own bodies. Luckily enough, this condition is treatable. The black market Dr. Gowen is one that helps these meat addicts specifically. Often against their own will, but they're grateful for his help in the end, as he helps them finally overcome a torturous mental state that drives them to try and kill anyone around them, at any given moment, just to fulfill a primal desire. Unfortunately, though... That is not the darkest aspect of the black market's underbelly, just the most prevalent one. Another practice that is severely harmful to carnivores and is even endorsed by the gangs are hyperdrugs. What's ironic is the fact that herbivores can also make use of this service for their own benefit. These hyperdrugs are basically body parts taken from living beings, mostly carnivores, pieces of their bodies that have been cut off and used as medicine to cure various ailments or strengthen specific attributes. This can be anything from fatigue to muscle growth to sexual performance. It is known that not only adult carnivores fall victim to this. Even child carnivores will be used if they are sold to such an establishment at a young age, as seen by Ibuki. Unfortunately, child death and exploitation is not limited to the hyperdrugs practice. In fact, there is a whole practice that is reliant on children, that being the selling of live meat. Here, young beasts, almost always herbivores, are kept in cages and prison cells, the only luxuries they may enjoy being a roof over their head and food. But calling these things a luxury is an overstatement, a severe insult to their suffering. They can't even speak, having never had the opportunity to learn this most basic skill. They are given no childhood, no place to play, nothing. They are nothing but a product the number of which is permanently marked on the sole of their foot. When they are bought, they are dragged out of their cell and eaten alive. It is said that they are sedated first by someone who worked at such a place, but it isn't known if this was merely a cruel joke or incentive to keep that child from fighting too much until it was their turn to be devoured. We note that the place where Louis was kept was shut down. However... There definitely were more than one of these child-selling practices within the black market, even during the reign of Louis as the boss of the Shishigumi. We can only hope that during this time, with his great influence over the black market, he made an effort to shut down these practices. Unfortunately, due to the nature of the black market, it is unlikely that these places were entirely eradicated, even if there was an effort to get rid of them. Places like these were only meant for the most vile and despicable of carnivores, those that give all the other carnivores a bad name. Those that bring shame to the very term carnivore. Aside from this, there are dozens of other practices that are either given brief mentions or are never mentioned but are likely to have been present, like the fighting pits where Q and Sun fought. It is simply not known how deep and how dark the black market went, only that the darkness ran very, very deep. The black market was destroyed during the riots and civil strife at the end of Beastars. Every shop, every millimeter was torn down by the carnivores in a frenzied rage upon the herbivores finding out about it, feeling ashamed for their actions. Was this, however, a good move? On the one hand, the terrible practices, the awful places that brought so much sorrow, so much pain to so many beasts, were finally torn down. Live meat, hyperdrugs and the power of the gangs were all stripped away. On the other hand, now carnivores have no place to satisfy their urges, no place to eat meat without hurting herbivores. Devourings, meat addicts' intentions can only grow as a result of this, which would make the city a much, 
much more dangerous place for both carnivores and herbivores, even risking a potential civil war. I fall in the middle. I think the destruction of the black market as it was, was a good thing. The corruption that ran so deep, the awful practices, the criminal activity all had to be torn down. However, a replacement is necessary. One option that seems strangely unconsidered is seafood. Fish and other creatures of the ocean have declared on multiple occasions that being devoured in their culture is not necessarily a bad thing. It is simply a part of life. For example, there was a case where Legoshi and Sagwan were tasked to find an octopus's daughter, who was taken by land creatures, only to find out that she had been turned into a roasted snack. Sagwan simply ate this snack, which the octopus was grateful for. Of course, there was a funeral for the fallen beast, but even then, sea culture funerals put a big emphasis on the continuation of the natural food cycle. In short, with the blessing of the sea creatures themselves, they could provide an excellent alternative to decrease the consumption of land animal meat. However, to believe that every carnivore will simply and exclusively switch to the consumption of marine life is not realistic. Not to mention that marine life already preys on one another. It is a very delicate ecosystem, and if all land carnivores switch to the consumption of fish, it would inevitably result in overfishing, which would eventually spell ecological disaster. Therefore, the consumption of sea life should not become something that carnivores will have to depend on. In the end, the consumption of fellow land animals will forever remain a part of life. Louis, the newest leader of the Horns conglomerate, pushed for an understanding between herbivores and carnivores in a great speech. I think an understanding that eating meat is simply part of carnivores is key, that the black market must be reborn in a new form, a government regulated one, one that doesn't have to be a black market. Previous government negligence is seen in the abandoned buildings and construction sites when the black market was still active. No regulations or surveillance was done in the area, leading to it being a breeding ground for all sorts of awful criminal activity. Louis, however, managed to make it a much better place when he was the leader of the Shishigumi. Free said that when he was a cub and he dropped a mere single coin, it would be gone before it even hit the ground. But under Louis, the black market changed to the point where if he accidentally dropped a bunch of money, surrounding beasts would help him pick the money back up. This shows that the very culture of the black market can be changed. This legal meat market can be rebuilt in the same place where the black market once stood. A government-regulated carnivore-only district where meat of dead beasts can be sold to carnivores in order to satisfy their instincts. The government could also learn from Gowen and have him share his research on helping carnivores overcome their meat addiction and help them keep their instincts in check. If the government wants to, then they can truly improve the lives of both carnivores and herbivores by really tackling this issue. This can only be done through mutual understanding through cooperation. It won't be easy and it won't be quick, but I think that this would be the best possible future for both, one where both sides can live comfortably and peacefully. And that's it for this video on the black market. I hope you all enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. I apologize for how slow I was in bringing out this video. Several things got in my way, school, work, other projects, but I have to admit, the worst obstacle was procrastination. I am trying my best to overcome this annoying flaw. I promise that my next video will not take nearly as long as this one, and I hope that I can make more regular uploads. I thank all of you for your extreme patience, and I apologize for the delay. I hope to see you all soon. Take care everyone.